radiation is all around us. When some people think of radiation, they are apt to run for the hills. Others put on sun cream and shades and head to the beach. Another is thankful his leg is not broken. In a cold country, turning on a radiator, I might take off my coat or warm up a meal in the microwave. Others simply radiate beauty through a smile. Radiation elicits many different responses from people depending on how they perceive it. Much of the debate about radiation is whether it's safe or not. But it is a constant, naturally occurring phenomenon on Earth and reaches us in many different ways as a daily part of our lives. What is radiation? In physics, radiation is the emission or transmission of energy in the form of waves or particles through space or a material medium. There are four main types. Electromagnetic radiation, which includes the visible light all around us. The radio waves we use for telecommunications. Microwaves, which cook those fabulous fast meals. Thermal radiation, such as heat transfer to keep us warm. Infrared, for studying the behavior of foxes at night. Or cosmic background radiation, a remnant from the Big Bang. Ultraviolet, which causes skin to tan. And the x-rays used by doctors in hospitals to explore the anatomy. <laughs> then there's acoustic radiation, such as the sound waves that inspire us with music. Particle radiation, such as alpha and beta, given off as what once was decays into nothingness and the neutron radiation that occurs in stars and man-made nuclear reactors for which of course special precautions need to be taken and finally gravitational radiation disturbances in the curvature of space-time which we use to observe the most spectacular astronomical effects such as supernova, black holes, and the formation of the early universe shortly after the Big Bang. Many kinds of radiation all around us, which, thanks to scientific progress, we are constantly putting to use for the benefit of society. One of those uses is mobile communication, wireless technology that uses radio waves to transmit calls and data. The first generation of wireless technology 1G put us in touch with each other wherever we were through mobile voice calls. The second generation, 2G, allowed us to text. 3G meant we could send and receive data too. 4G allows us to download video and play games. Now we are on the cusp of a new revolution in mobile communications. 5G, the fifth generation which will multiply data transmission speeds a hundredfold. We will be able to download those videos in fractions of a second. But that's only the tip of the iceberg. 5G will herald a massive explosion of new uses for wireless technology. From the Internet of Things to self-driving and connected vehicles, improvements in healthcare and better environmental monitoring, to name just a few. All this made possible through the sensible use of electromagnetic radiation. Many studies carried out over the past 20 years and the World Health Organization assure us that the levels of radio frequency exposure from telecommunication base stations, mobile phones and wireless networks are too low to affect human health. Ah. Unlike radiation used, say, in nuclear power plants, which is ionizing radiation, Non-ionizing radiation, such as radio waves, is generally not harmful to living organisms. While the full deployment of 5G wireless technology over the next decade will need a lot more telecommunications infrastructure and will use new parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, the frequencies it will use, the millimeter radio waves from 30 to 300 gigahertz, are still a long way from the ionizing part of the spectrum. Contact duration, distance, power and other factors also need to be taken into consideration in addition to radiation. So, to ensure people's health, 
countries all over the world have formulated safe standards for the electromagnetic radiation that is allowed from 5G base stations for mobile communications. Most European regions comply with specifications saying that it should not exceed 10 watts per square meter. Meanwhile, North America complies with specifications where the limit is 6 watts per square meter. In China, that number is 0.47 watts per square meter. When operators in each region are building 5G networks, they must comply with their local requirements. Of course, it is only right that we continue to study the effects of radio frequency radiation on the health of the population and continue to issue safety recommendations. For one, we wouldn't recommend that you sleep with your phone every night. That cannot be good for any relationship.